Welcome to my Barlatis Body Blitz workout of bar tucks and fold overs. For today's workout, all you will need is a sturdy chair or a bar to hold on to, and I'm working out on hard floor, so I've got a cushy exercise mat. I'm also wearing my neat little socks that I bought the other day, which are half toe bar socks, and they have cushioning and grip on the bottom. So let's see how it goes. I'm hoping that they'll give me some extra cushioning, because sometimes my feet get a bit sore doing these bar style exercises up on your toes all the time. All right, we're gonna get started with some leg swings. So you just swing your leg forward and back in a bent leg position, really just starting to warm up in a very slow, fluid way, holding onto your support, holding everything in, standing nice and tall, and just swinging. Just go to the range of motion that you feel comfortable warming up. And as you start to feel your muscles relaxing and warming, you can go slightly um, more extended to the front and to the back. Just keeping it bent at the moment. Nothing too difficult to start off with. We're gonna get there soon though. Just go for four, three, two, one. And I'm just gonna change sides and other side, forward and back. Nice fluid motion. Keep your tummies pulled in and your back really nice and straight throughout this entire workout. It's really important with bar exercises to get your form right. Forward and back. Not too many more. Warming through the lower back as well. Go for five, four, three, two, and one. Great job. Now coming to your support, we're only ever going to rest a hand on our support, so it's never a grip for dear life, okay? So just try to balance upright as much as you can and a light little rest on that support. Coming with your feet in a parallel position, come up high on your tippy toes and then slide down as if you're sliding your back down a wall. So it's going to be the same sort of position the entire time where you're really upright and your shoulders and upper body are relaxed, but you can feel the tension in the front of your thighs. So just adjust, make sure you're in a position where you start to feel your thighs engaging. Okay, you don't want to be too far down to start off with because we're only starting out. And then what I want you to do is start tucking your hips forward and back. So you're not over exaggerating the back, you're just releasing and then tucking forward. So the back is just a release and a hard tuck forward. The emphasis is on the forward. And what you can imagine is that you're trying to stretch out the front of your thighs. So imagine that you're stretching as far as you can to lengthen and elongate those thighs. So that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to lengthen the muscles that we work all the time in our squats and our lunges and we're trying to streamline them so they don't get bulky. So tuck hard. I'll show you what this looks like from the side. Release a little bit. Don't over arch your back and then tuck. The warmer you get, the lower you can start to come and you will feel it in your thighs more as you get lower. So really tuck hard. Five. Four, three, two, one. Now what I want you to do is circle halfway and tuck. Semicircle one direction and tuck. So you're drawing a semicircle with your hip, straight out to the side, back and up. And when you're tucking, you're pushing your hips to the front. Around and tuck. Around and tuck. Really push your hip out to the side. Really lengthen through that side hip and then come back in and tuck. Once again, not over exaggerating towards the back. So your back is just relaxed and it's not over arching. Tuck, around and tuck. You should really feel it on this supporting leg, the one that you're circling towards because your hip is taking all that work. Four, three, two, and one. And we're going to go the other way and tuck. You might find that one side is stronger than the other, that you can go a lot lower or you can push your hip out more on one side. That's fine. Just try to find 
at balance. So one side might be slightly stronger, so maybe work the other side a little bit more. Try to go that little bit lower, so you can really even out any imbalances in your body. Semicircle around and tuck. You're not circling all the way around, you're just drawing a semicircle and then forward. Forward. You should be feeling this in your front of your thighs now. Just go for four, three, two, one. Now I want you to lean your body back. You can put your hand behind you and I want you to pulse down with your body leaning backwards. So you should really feel this stretching through the front of your thighs. So it's like you're reaching down towards the floor and it's your knees coming forward. Your whole body is making a straight line from your head to your knees. Not many, because I know these ones are sore. Breathe through the pain. Go for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now coming back up and one leg in front. Okay, so you're just a nice little stance, half a meter or about a foot in front, coming back down into that slightly bent knee position and tuck forward with that leg in front. So what we're doing now is we're loading all of our weight onto the back leg. The front leg is really just for balance, but your body is still centered over that back leg and you're pushing through that thigh, lengthening out. Really getting every last little bit at the front so you cannot possibly straighten out anymore. Push, push, keep your back straight. Just go for five, four, three, two, and one. And we're going to change the leg in front. Now, as you come down, as you push forward, you're lengthening, but you're also squeezing that glute at the back to help you with that pushing action. So squeeze, so it's a thigh and a glute workout. Squeeze forward. You're centered over that back leg, keeping the rest of your body really still, relaxed and tall, making sure that you're not putting heaps of pressure on the bar or that leg in front. All of your weight should be sitting on top of this back leg. It's almost like a single leg squat, but you're then tucking hard. Five, four, three, two, one. Coming back into the center, I'm gonna turn on an angle so you can see what I'm doing. Stay back down. Now we're going to just go forward and push our hips forward. So touching, staying in the same plane. You can see that I'm moving my hips back and forward, but I'm not coming up and down as such. You might slightly go up and down, but it's all about the push your hips back, push your hips forward. Back and push. So you're pressing both thighs forward. Back with your hips and forward. Really trying to stay low. Sucking in your belly, trying to keep your back really straight, even on the down. Don't curve your back. You don't need to reach as low as me. And push for five. Push hard. Four. And push. Three. Push. Two. And last one. Awesome job. Now we're going to go into some fold overs to give those front of the legs a little bit of a break. So I'm gonna go and profile so you can see me. What I want you to do is find a position where you're really comfortable. Actually, I might turn my chair around. Depending on how tall your chair is, you might wanna use the lean or you might just wanna use the seat. The lower you go, the more you're gonna feel this, okay? So if you're really flexible, you can even use yoga blocks down here or even put your fingertips on the mat. So I'm going to start off with one leg up and I'm going to sit back. So you can see I'm sitting back and I'm poking my toe towards the back of the room. My back is flat and all of that weight is loading in this back glute. 
sitting back. So I'm folding my body over and then I'm sitting back, back. Really trying to stretch out that front leg nice and long, pointing through the toe so that you can feel the lengthening and elongation. You should even really be squeezing that glute on that uh, leg that's up. You can feel it there contracting, so keep your leg nice and high. And squeeze, squeeze. Go for eight, seven, six, five, four, just three, two, one. Now what I want you to do is come up on that front toe. You can keep the, this front leg a bit lower this time. We're going to do the same action, but this time we've got a larger range of motion and you'll feel it's a lot harder when you're up on the front toe. It doesn't have to be really high. Keep your body really parallel here. So both hips are facing the mat and that front leg it's still stretched out nice and long and pointed. Five, four, three, two, one. Now what we're going to do is a combination. We're going to bring our leg up, come down, up on our toe, sit back. Down, up, sit back. Down, up, Sit back. These are sore, so we're not going to do a huge number of them. Sit back. Just sit back as much as you can. Sit back. So on the sit back, you're bending that leg and sending your hips towards the back. Just four more. Three. Two. And last one. Now we'll keep this front leg straight. You can put a tiny bend in the knee and we're just gonna do a large sweeping down up. If you want to come down on your forearms like this, you can. Down up, sweeping with that front leg. Pushing up, doing some glute work here. Trying to keep our hips really steady and straight. The tendency is to wanna to turn out our hip but we'll try not to do that for this first exercise because we'll be doing it very soon. Just down and up as high as you can. On the up, squeeze that glute. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now I want you to rotate your hip out. So your hip bone is facing the front of the room and then rotate back. So it's out and back, out and back. Rotate. Keep that leg really high. You want to make sure you're engaging your glute at the top every time. So really squeeze your glutes. Don't lose any contraction on those glutes. And when you come down, both hips are facing the mat again. So hips down, hips forward, down, forward rotating, pointing that toe, leg nice and long for four, three, two, one. Now stay open. You can put your hand like this on your chair and I want large sweeping circles. So keep your body facing the front. If you want to move your leg around, the supporting leg, you can to make it more comfortable and you're just sweeping that leg in a large circle. Doesn't matter which way you're going, we are gonna change it in a minute. Sweep, sweep. Depending on how flexible you are is how high you can go. It doesn't really matter as long as you feel it. Four, three, two, one. Now, stay open like this and we're gonna do those raises again but with our hip turning to the front. So this is targeting the glutes, but also the hips and a slight outer thigh motion as well. So all this area here, it's really going to tone up and tighten. And your supporting leg is still getting work as well. Don't worry, I can feel it. 
So just keep your body nice and relaxed. Try not to hunch in your shoulders. And up, up. Five, four, three, two, one. Now we're going to circle the other way. So hopefully you remember which way you circled before. Doesn't really matter if you do the same direction twice. It's still going to target the same muscle groups. So you're really trying to get your leg up. Large sweeping circles. Keeping your knee nice and straight. Pointing through that toe. And breathe. Big circles. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Just four. Three, two, one, and last thing, bend your leg, keep your hip facing the ceiling and ups, little ups. This is one of my favorite exercises. I do it in many of the videos because it's so effective. It's really multitasking. It shapes your glutes, outer thigh. You can even feel it a little bit on the inner thigh on the other leg and just push up. Your toe is slightly higher than your heel, than your knee here. So try to keep it on that angle position. This is called an attitude raise. Go for eight, seven, six, five, just four, three, two, one. Awesome job. Now we're going to come back into those tucks. So I'm going to move my chair around again so that I have a slightly higher support. And this time we're going to start in a turn out position. So your feet should be turned out at nearly 90 degree angles, maybe 45 degree angles to one another. And then as you come up onto your toes, you'll have to walk your feet in together again so that your heels are touching at all times. Now once again, sliding down that imaginary wall, just make sure you're the right distance away from your support. And you're just coming down here to that point where you feel your thighs engaging. Okay, back nice and straight, tummy pulled in, shoulders relaxed, nice long neck, and now start tucking forward. So the difference between this position and where we had our feet parallel is that we're also putting some pressure on our heels, which means we're starting to engage the inner thighs. So this one is going to get sore very quickly. But that's okay, that's what we want. We want to feel that burn because we know that's what's going to shape our muscles. So keep going and tucking forward. Try and come that little bit lower if you can. You really need to feel the burn quite intensely by the end of each exercise. If you're not feeling it, then make sure you come down lower. Some people can go really low. It also depends on flexibility. So everyone's different. You don't have to stay in exactly the same position as me throughout this workout. Just do whatever works for you. You might be higher, you might be lower, your feet might be higher up, your legs might be slightly wider than mine. It really doesn't matter as long as you're not cheating yourself. So push hard forward. So you're tucking hard. So once again from the side, I am tucking hard to the front. Release your back lightly and then tuck. The main emphasis is on the push and also on pushing those heels together. So go for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we're doing those circles, but this time all the way around. So you're not stopping in the semicircle and tucking forward like before. You're pushing your hips to the side, to the back, to the side, to the front. Side, back, side, front. Really thinking about the side and the front tucking hard. The back you don't need to worry about as much because you don't really want to over arch your back. So you're coming around and the tuck to the side, push to the side, front, push around, push front. Really thinking about hitting those corners and maxing out the stretch in your muscles. Push. Think about the push on your heels. Try not to move your upper body too much. Down around, forward. Four, three, two, one. Now other way. So try to stay up high on those toes. Pushing your heels together. 
back nice and straight, really tucking to the side and the front, pushing, resisting, creating your own resistance here, as if you're pushing something away with your hips, a heavy cement block that's blocking you and you're pushing it away. Push, push. Really imagine that you can't push any harder. Push forward and straighten out those thighs at the front. There shouldn't be any bend in your hip flexors. It should be a straight line. Four, three, two, one. Now, those bending back, reaching down pulses. So your body is leaning back. You're still putting pressure on those heels. Up high on the toes, keeping a straight line from your knees all the way up to your head. Breathing, pushing, really trying to get as close to your heels as you can. The further you reach, the harder it is. Eight, seven, six, five. Keep pushing, just four, and three, and two, and one, coming up. We're going to put that leg in front and the other one to the back, keeping your legs turned out, okay? So make sure that when you come back in together and then you step back, your legs are still turned out. And we're coming down and tucking, tuck. Really tucking hard. All of the support is on the back leg. So the front leg is quite light, just helping you balance. Your arm is resting really lightly. Your upper body is relaxed and you're pushing those hips to the front. You should feel it all the way along the front of that quad. Lengthening and elongating. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And switching sides, keeping your legs turned out, sliding down that wall and tuck, tuck. Squeeze your glutes as you tuck forward. So you're squeezing your glute, especially from the back leg there, as you tuck hard, push, pushing that leg to the front. Make sure your tummy's in to support your core and your back and keep really nice and upright, really pushing. Eight, seven, six, five, just four, three, two, one, now coming back together, we're putting our feet back together, sliding back down, and we're going to do that level change. So forward and back. So you're pushing your hips to the front and to the back. You're pushing as hard as you can, trying to keep your hips on that same plane. Okay, you're not moving up and down here. You're really trying to push and keep it on that same level. Okay, forward and back. Exaggerate that push. Pressure on your heels, high up on your tippy toes, pushing everything under. Eight, seven, six, five, just four, Three, two, and last push. Now we're going back into fold overs. I'm going to change my chair so you can see me better, but you don't need to do that. And what we're going to do is come into, sorry, I've got to turn my chair around again so that I've got my arms on the seat there. What we're going to do is come down, rest on the chair, and raise that front leg. Now start to sit back. So you're sitting your glutes to the back, pointing that toe towards the back so that you're really coming low in this supporting leg and trying to keep that front leg up so you feel the work in your glutes as well. Keep both hips facing the ground and really reach back far. So if you're trying to sit in a chair, sit. These are called sit backs because you're literally sitting your hips back. 
This ball is actually helping me because I've got to keep my foot above it. So every time I graze it with my toe, I know that I'm letting my leg drop. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now come in for a second and come up on that front toe. Now raise back and if you want to actually, you can keep your leg a lot lower here and push back with your leg lower, really feeling that in the supporting leg. Sitting those hips back, pointing that toe long at the front, keeping everything pulled in and push, push, push. You should really feel the burn now. Keeping up on that toe increases the range of motion so you can feel that burn even more and your calf is getting a bit of a workout. Four, three, two, one. Now we're doing that combination. So up with your leg, down, up, sit back. Down, up, sit back. Down, up, sit back. Bring that leg high at the top so you're squeezing your glute and then that supporting leg is sitting back, really pushing hard. This is intense sculpting for that glute. That supporting glute is burning. If yours isn't burning, get lower. Get higher on that toe. Five, four, three, two, last one. <laughs> awesome job, that wasn't easy. Now, we're going to do those leg up and downs. If you want to rest your hands on your support like this, you can. Slight bend in your supporting leg and up as far as you can so that you're really burning out that glute, keeping your back nice and straight here. Try not to arch your back too much, I know it's tempting. Especially if you're trying to look at me, you tend to arch your back. But keep it down and really just kick that leg up until you feel your glute engaging. Everyone's different. If you only keep it low, but you feel that glute, then that's totally fine. Up. Up. Squeezing. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Just four. Three. Two, one, now we're going to turn out. So turning the hip out and back, out and back. So keeping that leg nice and high, pointing through that toe, out and down. Your hip bones are both facing down on the down and that front leg is facing the front of the room on the up, up, up. Just stretching through that front hip, lengthening through that leg, trying to keep it up, keep it high, engaging that glute and those hips. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, now keeping it turned out and we're going to do those circles. So if you need to adjust your other supporting leg, doesn't matter if you circle forward or back, just start circling. Big sweeping circles, really big and high. Try to keep your outer thigh facing the ceiling at all times. So it's tempting to kind of twist the hips around, but if you can, just stay in the same position and just move that leg from that pivot point in your hip. Keeping that outer thigh up, leading with that outer thigh. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm just gonna adjust a little bit. We're gonna do those leg sweeps, but hip turn forward. Okay, so really nice, large range of motion. Kicking up and down, squeezing, Really squeezing at the top, squeezing that glute. Up, tummy's in, relax through the shoulder, squeeze. 
squeeze. Eight, seven, six, five, just four more. Three, you can do this. Two and one. Now we have to circle back, back. So I went front ways before, so I'm circling back, but if you went the opposite way, it doesn't really matter. Just go the other way. Big circles, really trying to get it up. I know it feels like it weighs a ton at the moment, but the higher you can get it, the more muscle fibers you're recruiting. And that's how you're gonna see change. Up, up, eight, seven, six, five, hang in there, four, three, two, one, now bend your leg and attitude raises. You can do this. This is the last exercise in fold over. We're not coming back to it. So just push up. Really think about that glute and outer thigh. Your toes higher than your knee. And push. Push. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, awesome job, well done. We're going to one last series in wide plie and then we're done with this workout. Okay, we're going to move our chair over again. We won't need it as much in wide plie, but just in case you need to balance. Now, really wide feet, as wide as you're comfortable with. When you slide down to your low point, your knees should not be over your toes, okay? Now, because we're going to be coming up on our toes, we want to come in slightly. Then come up your, on your toes, and you should really be able to feel your thighs engaging. Once again, making sure your back is really flat here. Very, very important. Come down and tuck forward. Tuck. Tuck. So once again, holding your tummy in here keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed, trying to stay up on your tippy-tippy toes and tucking hard to the front. Releasing to the back and tucking forward. The real emphasis is on the forward, so push. Push your hips to the front. Push. Your legs should be quite fatigued here, so if you want to stay further up and not come down as low, that's totally fine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, just four more, three, two, one, come down for a second, shake it out, the legs are starting to quiver. So come back up and now we're going to tuck to the side. So you're tucking in line with either knee, forward, forward, tucking hard, pushing your hip forward. Here's my cat Minnie wanting to join in. Yes, Minnie, we're in pain here. Don't distract us, please. Push, push, side to side. Really trying to stay low. I know it's hard. Try and stay up on those toes and push forward. My legs are starting to shake, so it's probably not looking very graceful anymore. But who cares, as long as it works, right? Forward. Three, two, one. Come down for a second. We're going to come back up and we're going to do those level changes. So let me turn for a bit. Forward and back. Really pushing your hips to the front and to the back. Forward and back, staying on that same horizontal plane. Pushing and sticking your hips to the back. Forward and back. Try to stay low. I know it's hard, but this is the last set of exercises and then we stretch. So please don't give up. Stick in it with me and you will see results. Forward, back, forward, back. Five, push, four, push, three, and two, and last one, coming back down. Now flat feet and tuck. Tucking forward with flat feet this time. Giving those poor feet a break. These socks definitely seem to help though. 
I don't feel the balls of my feet as sore as usual. Forward, tuck. If you want to, you can put both hands on your waist. You can really feel your hips tucking. Get lower. Last little bit. This is the second last exercise. So really give it all you've got. You really can do this. It's all mind over matter. Eight, seven, six, five, just four, three, two, one. And last thing, get low and push your legs to the back. Last little burnout. This one's a killer. Really sore, but really great for opening up the hips, leaning out the thighs. It gets your inner thighs, glutes, squeeze your glutes, push, get lower, push. Tiny pulses to the back. Keep your back straight. Don't lean forward. Eight, seven, six, five. Just four, three, two, one. Great job, you've made it. That's it, we're gonna stretch. I'm going to get you to grab your foot in that nice quad stretch. And if you can, if you're up for it, lean forward and press your foot into your hand, giving that nice elongation through your back, really pressing that foot into the hand. That's what's gonna stretch out the front of your quad. And then when you've finished with that, bring it forward and sit back to stretch out that glute. That poor glute really got worked hard in all of those exercises. So sit back, nice and long, and then bring that leg to the front and then stretch your chest towards your leg. Flexing that toe increases the stretch at the back of the leg here. Nice and long. Sitting your hips right back. And then just Stretching that inner thigh, bring your leg down like this, just opening up through that inner thigh. And we're just going to reverse the stretches, other side, really stretching as low as you can, keep challenging yourself with your flexibility. And then coming up, chest to the thigh, keep your back flat here, don't round down, keep it nice and flat and upright chest forward, and then that figure four, sitting your hips back. Nice stretch through that glute. Really sitting down though. And that quad stretch, if you can, just pushing back like this. Really pushing your foot into your hand and squeezing, stretching out the front of those thighs. And there you have it, you've finished your workout, tucks and fold overs. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to working out with you again soon.